Charlotte at Florida Atlantic, and FAU is a seven-point favorite, juiced at minus 115. The total sits at 57 and a half. Now, this opened FAU minus five and a half, and the total has stayed the same. So it has moved in the favor of FAU. Uh, last season, FAU won this 38 to nine over Charlotte. Post-game win expectancy for Florida Atlantic in that game was 100%. It was complete domination in the second half. At halftime, it was 9-7 to seven Charlotte. It was very strange. Uh, but Will Healy's bunch, 0-5-1 against the spread in their last six as a road dog. They have not fared well on the road. They do return the quarterback, Chris Reynolds, along with the wide receivers, Tucker, Dubos, and the running back, uh, uh, Bird. Had to remember the name. Uh, but they weren't able to do a lot against FAU last year or against teams that were significantly more talented. And FAU certainly looks like they are the more talented team here. Nikosi Perry, big play running back Johnny Ford, the wide receivers Burton and Wester, who were responsible for the majority of FAU's explosive plays last year, uh, along with four starting offensive linemen. The offense for FAU certainly looks good, and the defense appears to be really good as well. Uh, we're going to start off with you, Parker, on this one. Um, I am curious what you think about Charlotte here. There is explosive potential. There is big play potential for Charlotte, but that defense does not look like it has improved a lot. Uh, you're hearing stuff out of fall camp, not exactly positive, not exactly glowing in favor of the defense, and you were hoping that they would take at least some steps forward. If they can't do anything on defense, is is Charlotte able to keep up in this game? Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I think this one, Charlotte's a really interesting case. They, you know, made a, made a higher defensive coordinator, maybe trying to turn some things around. The defense last year was just really, really bad. But also, I, I think the offense was really bad as well. I, I pulled this one up because this was a game that, that kept me awake um, last season because I had this predicted as FAU by just under a touchdown, and it was a complete blowout. Charlotte in that game last year uh, had three first and goals at the uh, inside the FAU 10 and came away with three total points there. Just completely not what you would expect in terms of finishing drives, really just weren't able to get it done um, in, in a game that my, my post-game win probability was actually a little bit uh, not close to 100 for, for FAU because <laughs> Charlotte had so many opportunities, right? And they just couldn't finish them, and then the defense got gassed in the second half. If you're betting Charlotte here, you're betting two things, I think. One, uh, that the offensive run game can get a little bit more success and uh, free up those explosive plays in the pass game. Last season, Charlotte's offense was 67th in EPA per rush, but they were 88th in rushing success rate. So they were only breaking off big runs, but they couldn't get that successful, hey, we need three yards here, hey, we need four yards here to break that off. If Charlotte can improve that run game a little bit, that really frees up the explosive pass game. That takes some pressure off of the defense as well. So you're betting that happens, and then you're betting the experience with the defensive coordinator uh, induces a little bit of positive regression on defense. Maybe Charlotte isn't just absolutely getting blown away. They were 129th in EPA per pass, 118th in EPA per rush last year. Football success is developmental. Will Hilly's a, a developmental guy. If if you think that Charlotte's defense is is or programs moving in the right direction, their defense won't be uh, just as hapless as last year. So explosive offense, raise the raise the floor a little bit with a little bit better run game. Maybe avoid some of those three and outs that just got your defense right back on the field. And uh, and, and if they can if finish those drives a little bit better. I really think Charlotte's offense should be able to keep them in a game here. That being said, I, I have heard the uh, defensive line concerns. I need a little bit more information on Charlotte. So uh, I, I think there's there's a path, uh, and I would lean towards betting Charlotte here, but I'm going to stay away from an official play just because there is so much uncertainty about that defense. I uh, I am going to ride with FAU. I, I really like FAU minus seven, but I want to get Kyle's thoughts on this. Uh FAU brings in new D.C. tight Orlando. If he can just keep the defense about the same as it was last year, that would certainly be a good thing. Uh, and the new offensive coordinator, Brent Deerman, of course, was the offensive coordinator at Kansas under Les Miles. Uh, did some really creative things. It had some explosive plays for a hapless Kansas Jayhawks team. Uh, now he's the offensive coordinator here at FAU. Uh, if he can maybe progress Nikosi Perry a little bit, that would certainly be welcome down in Boca Raton. Uh, what are your thoughts on this game, Kyle? Yeah, first, I think Healy is a coach I respect quite a bit. I think he he is a good coach at getting the most out of his talent. Uh, the defense, though, I mean, 5.9 and 5.4 yards per carry the last two years. They had 21 sacks combined the last two seasons. I mean, that's just atrocious stuff from the defensive line. The secondary gives up a ton of plays, obviously not helped by the fact that there's no pressure on the quarterback. But 
Charlotte allowed 39 plays of 30 yards or more last year. That was 124th in the country. And last year when Florida Atlantic won 38 to 9, they averaged 8.4 yards per play. So uh, some really big play offense there. Now, Dearman, the new offensive coordinator, coordinator, I would expect that they would play quickly. He's always played fast everywhere he's gone. Uh, you know, Taggart is an interesting character. He thinks this offensive line's really good. I do want to say Taggart not, does not have a good history with offensive lines. So, you know, I don't, I don't know if he's the best uh, at understanding what is a good offensive line or not. It probably won't matter in this game. And I would tend to think that Florida Atlantic scores quite a few points here. My lean would be Florida Atlantic on the side. And I would like a Florida Atlantic team total. The team totals aren't out yet, but I'd take an over on Florida Atlantic team total here probably in the range of 32 or something like that on the team total. So I think they will score a lot of points. They'll play quickly. Chris Reynolds, uh, who seems like he's been here for a really long time for Charlotte, uh, good decision maker. I think he's a solid scrappy player. Uh, I think the talent gap is pretty big here between Charlotte and Florida Atlantic in a game that I think we'll see quite a few possessions. Uh, you know, seven's not too many points. So my lean would be Florida Atlantic here. And that's uh, my, uh, we'll go ahead and make it official. My official play on this is FAU covering the seven. Uh, didn't like it as much at seven and a half. It dropped back down a little bit. Uh, my line on it is closer to 10. So I think talent will win the day. Uh, Parker, I think initially liked the FAU minus seven, but Parker, go ahead and correct me. You're going to stay off this one. I, uh, yeah, I, let's, let's not call this an official play. I think I, uh, <laughs> a little early season kinks can work out there, but um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not going to go an official play there. Okay, that sounds good. We we will correct it on the graphics. Uh, but yes, I'm I'm gonna ride with it. I like FAU minus seven. I uh, already got my money, so <laughs> that works for me. 